Welcome back everybody. Good to have you to another real estate market update for the greater Milwaukee area, February 2024. The year's off to a really, well, interesting start. Uh, list prices are up over 20% in the greater Milwaukee area. So what's up with that? We'll take a look. And then also right when we could use really more inventory, we have headlines in the news that new construction numbers are falling off the cliff and i have both national and local new construction numbers for you as always before we get started let's take a quick look at the latest numbers from the mls and i always start out with inventory because that is in my opinion really the single biggest indicator for what's about to happen in a market inventory is basically the result of supply and demand if inventory is tight that puts pressure on the market creates more competition amongst buyers it drives up prices if inventory expands it has of course the opposite effect so if you've been following me um, i've been talking the last few months about a slight trend that we're seeing more and more inventory trickle in the market so not really a surprise here we're up 15.4 percent 2438 units were on the market for sale in january and that's more than we used to have. But also when you look in comparison, you have below the historic numbers. We are still a far cry away of what Milwaukee inventory used to look like. Um, sold units, 1,080. That's within the range, minus 1.9%. The velocity is interesting because that's a mixed bag. We have 22 days on market. If you recall, for most of the last 12 months, last year, spring, summer and fall, we were somewhere between five and seven days on market. So extremely fast paced market. Now we're 22 days. That's a mixed bag because we do have some inventory left over from last year, either not priced correctly or condition bad or just, you know, really lousy pictures or whatever it is. Uh, didn't show well on the internet it is worth picking through those if you know what you're looking for there's still opportunities to be had at the same time we are also seeing new listings coming on the market and selling within two days and uh, oftentimes with 5 10 15 we've seen 18 offers on a deal um, closing at five percent ten percent over list price so we're already back in that hyper competitive environment on hot new listings um, but that's going to clear out. So the 22 days are going to come down relatively soon here, but still opportunities to be had. Uh, in terms of median sold price, we are at 280,000. That's up 5.6% this year, January over last year in January. Very important to compare the same months because we have such a, a very strong seasonality in our market. So this is sold price and it's very important to keep that in mind. Sold price is what a buyer and the seller agreed on and then actually closed on. List price, what we're going to discuss in a second, is asking price. That is what a seller wants. It is unclear if the buyers are actually up to the challenge or, or willing to buy into that and offer at least what the seller is asking or even more if there's competition. So that remains to be seen. Um, one thing that I want to point out here with prices, if you look at the historic numbers below, um, especially at the January 2015, we were at 142, now we're at 280. So in nine years, we have basically doubled prices in the Milwaukee area. And there is really not a thing that I can see that is going to change that. Uh, at least not uh, nothing on the radar for the for the near future. Inventory always very, very low in January, February. This is normal because buyers are on the market quickly. New year has started. They have the new year's resolution to buy a house. Maybe you're in that position as well. You're already out there. Sellers take a little longer. They start talking to an agent. Then they start preparing the house, need some cleaning, some staging, some painting, maybe even some work and then pictures and etc. So it takes a while before you get it on the market. So inventory is coming. Um, we, my team, we have a number of listings that we're currently preparing with our sellers that's, <clears throat> that's coming on the market as well. So you have to be patient a little bit. There will be more, more inventory. I know there is a lot in the pipeline, but the market's already very, very hot and quite competitive. And the sellers are expecting this and, and they're, maybe you can call it their gambling because when you look at new list prices, so asking prices, um, what sellers are asking for. They jumped up in a way I have not seen this before. We are up $65,000. So I want to be very clear. This is list price. This is what people are asking for, what sellers are asking for. We have another line here, which is actually the sold price, the green line. That is what buyers and sellers ultimately negotiated and agreed. 
the crux here is that the green line is lagging behind because the last data point that we have here, um, those deals were actually negotiated in November and in December and they just closed in January. So the green line is always lagging one month behind. It will be interesting to see if this is going to jump up here as well, if the buyers are willing to step up to what the sellers are asking for. And I want to give you an idea on um, why I think this is such a significant um, change here. So the, I've titled this, the sellers are really setting the bar for 2024. And you can see this is this year, January, and here we have last year. So this is seasonally normal. We have seen last year as well a $25,000 increase. And we are expecting this every year in January. It's just the magnitude of this um, is really surprising. And we'll have to see and wait a few more weeks until we have the data to see if buyers are willing to follow the sellers here. Um, anecdotally, I can tell you it looks like they are because the deals that we have been involved in the last six weeks have been quite competitive already. Um, it really, you know, it doesn't matter if you buy it on the buyer side or on the seller side. On the selling side, you want to take most out of this market because probably you're going to be a buyer. So you need all the money that you can get out of a deal in order to buy your new house. And if you're on the buying side, if you're first time home buyer, it can be a quite challenging market. So you need every advantage that you can get. And we have put a few things on our website that may help you with that. So I would be very happy to talk with you about your plans for 2024. If you're planning on moving, um, you can go on our website on pointrg.com. You have the web address here below and you can download our buyer's guide, which is specifically for this competitive environment and for what's going on in Milwaukee. Uh, about 28 pages that gives you a lot of good information. We always try to lead with education and with information to get you prepared. Um, uh, for this market and what's going on. So even if you're a repeat home buyer and you've bought your last house 10 years ago, uh, there's a lot of information in there that's very relevant because things have changed. If you're moving to Milwaukee, you can download our relocation guide. You can also sign up for MLS access. So if you're browsing on Zillow and Realtor, uh, you can go on onpointrg.com and uh, sign up for MLS access. I'm happy to set that up for you. And then uh, finally, if you want to have a chat with me and talk about your plans for 2024, you can just directly uh, look at my schedule, uh, see what appointment time works good for you. And we'll hop on a phone call or on a Zoom call. And I'd be happy to hear from you. A lot of people just send me an email. Of course, that's an option as well. And you have my email address here below. Now let's get back to the data. And I want to have a quick look at mortgage rates. So. If you recall, rates have dropped a lot here um, from the peak that we've seen here. We actually have seen uh, realistic rates here in excess of 8%. So that was really tough October, November last year. And then we had a landslide of a, of a drop here. And now the last couple of weeks, we've seen rates go back up again. Uh, this has a little bit to do with what uh, Jerome Powell from the Federal Reserve Bank has said. They're not quite satisfied with how the economy is developing. Inflation is still a little bit higher than what they would like to see. So they're, they still stand to what they said. They're going to cut rates this year, but uh, they already they also indicated that in March, they are probably not going to cut rates. And this was the response of the market. So rates um, in the last couple of weeks have trended up. But my recommendation is really don't try to time the market based on mortgage rates. You can always refinance if and when rates get lower, because what's going to happen if, if rates are trending significantly lower, that will just be fuel to the fire, more buyers in the market, more competition and higher prices. So it's better if you already have your home uh, and then you can always refinance into a lower rate. That's, an, that's always an option. Now, just to give you an idea on how dynamic the forecasting is at the moment, and how quickly things are changing. You have here the forecasts for the four quarters for 2024. And in December, the forecasts were pretty much in the upper sixes to sevens. We've indicated uh, lower rates throughout the year. 
but the updated forecast that came out just a few weeks ago are actually much much more optimistic and we're going to see uh, according to this forecast lower rates quite a bit sooner and that is going to be fuel on on the fire also in terms of competition unfortunately what's doing this to prices so we've started last year with um, some price corrections the second half of the year then was uh, got stronger and stronger and if you look at um, the top 20 cities in the us um, there is a pattern that you can see when you look at the markets that have been extreme priced extremely high and also uh, very very competitive let me point out i don't know seattle here for example if you live in seattle and you're moving to milwaukee uh, everything seems to be on sale here houses cost a fraction of what they cost in seattle and those very expensive markets have really consolidated last year at the same time the lower priced markets um, in Orange have the example, Cleveland and Detroit, for example, those are markets that are much lower priced. People are moving there because the cost of living is so much less. They can work remotely and this is where prices are going up. Um, and so everything is meeting in the middle. You have prices that are coming down, you have prices that are going up and everything is gravitating towards the middle. Milwaukee area is still quite well below the national average. So we are trending up. And you can see this here, I got the numbers here, US national average last year was 5.1% and the Milwaukee metro area is 7.5%. And it looks like we're going to keep going in this direction. Um, when you look on a national level, home price forecasts have changed just as much as mortgage rates forecasts have changed. So I have here a number of forecasts from November and then the updates from January. With a Goldman Sachs, for example, they were forecasting for this year prices to go up 1.9%. And now in January, they've already revised it to 5%. Mortgage Banker Association um, in a similar fashion. And basically everybody else is also getting, getting more and more optimistic on what home prices are going to do this year. So there's nobody left that is going to uh, predict in their modeling that home prices are going to go down in 2024 i've al uh, already shown you last month the home price expectation survey so if you missed it you can go back there there's also a five-year forecast that the top 100 economists are modeling um, but i'm not going to put that here you've seen it already last month let's talk about uh, u.s housing starts because they have fallen 15 percent in january and that is really unexpected in a way the harsh winter had to do with that so we had a lot of snow in many areas of the country Overall, builders are optimistic, but we really need more housing and this uh, didn't really help. So let me, let me zoom out here and show you the big picture here. You have a chart that goes back to 1981. This is new home construction and the green line here is the average. So uh, it's about a million houses a year and we've underproduced here in the last decade. So you can see that the overproduction that we had here and then pendulum swings the other side, we cut back too much we're breaking too hard under production for the last 10 years and this is basically the reason why we have that chronic housing shortage so there's different banks are estimating different numbers but somewhere between five and uh, two and five million is the number of homes that we would need on a national level to get caught up with what the demand actually is now let's take a look what's happening in um in our metro area so i pulled here the numbers for milwaukee ozaki Washington and Waukesha County um, and we had a, in total 11,933 homes sold single family and only 5% 583 of those were new construction homes and I got the breakdown here you can see in Waukesha we had 319 Ozaki yay uh, 121 and Washington 97 and Milwaukee is coming in last with 46 and most of them in Franklin. I think we closed three or four of those new construction in Franklin actually last year. Our team did. So this is what's happening locally. New construction is not really a driver of inventory here uh, as it is in many of the southern states where there is a consistent supply of new inventory. Uh, we're just very, very conservative here. But it also has to do with the price point. So we're seeing typical new construction homes now going over $500,000. In the last two or three years, there were a lot of deals you could get in the mid to high 400s, um, like this one here in, in the picture that is actually in Grafton. And um, I pulled the data, you can, you can see here the comparison. This is 2023. 
and the blue share is what has been less than five hundred thousand dollars and then the green part here that's five hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars so that was always the biggest chunk but there was a good amount of inventory uh, that came on the market in, in spec homes that was under five hundred thousand and when you look at the at the new numbers from 2024 there's currently 206 units for sale only 10 percent of those are under half a million everything else is over half a million and also the share over 700 and over a million is increasing so 90 percent of the homes are now over five hundred thousand dollars there's still uh, a lot of merit in buying new construction home in my opinion because you don't have any major maintenance for the next 10 20 25 years and if you sell the house in 10 years you are still selling a relatively new house which is always great when you're on the selling side so lots of advantages there uh, but the prices are going up and that also sets a little bit the benchmark for existing homes because existing homes in a way are always uh, trailing new construction which is a function of cost of labor cost of material and cost of land what can we expect for the next few uh, weeks here in the milwaukee market rates are expected to be stable at least short term um, we think we're going to remain in the low to mid sixes so uh, in a way i almost feel this is good because we would have we would see a crazy rush in the market in in spring if rates would come down too fast um, but there is the outlook long term that you know towards middle of the year end of the year we're going to be below six percent you know 5.99 is already uh, below six percent and we know from research that psychologically this has a big impact um, more new listings are on the way um, so that's a normal seasonal pattern but there is an additional new inventory coming this year because we had a lot of sellers wanted to move last year and because of the high rates and they felt they were rate locked to their to their old mortgage they didn't want to make the change and now they're saying screw it it's been too long we need to get on the market we need to get moving and this is starting to happen this year and also because of course rates are coming down from the extreme highs that we've seen so that also helps with that a little so more inventory is on the way but there's also opportunities to be found within the existing inventory remember 22 days on market so a portion of those listings are left over from last year they were overpriced condition not good pictures bad etc whatever the reason is buyers are so quick these days to dismiss a listing if something didn't sell in seven or ten days they're asking me what's wrong with this listing there's got to be something wrong with it and they're just going over it and sometimes it's worth a, uh, a closer look and it may have been just overpriced but it's really important to understand the difference between list price and fair market value just because you've gotten a discount on list price does not mean you've gotten a good deal because fair market value could be even less than that so for our buyers we always calculate fair market value so we have the data we know what we're looking at before we sit down and formulate a strategy for putting an offer in on a house that being said it's difficult to adopt the right mindset because you have to be very patient this is not the time of the year to rush it and force it you have to be very patient but at the same time you have to be able or ready to respond on a moment's notice and be very quick to seize an opportunity when it presents itself because otherwise it will be gone so the more education and information you have the more you know about the market the better you work with your agent um, the better the outcome most likely is that being said if you're ready to get into the market and you are wondering how the experience of working with me or with my team is I'd like to invite you to check me out online you can go and check our Google reviews or Zillow reviews or, or reviews on realtor.com and I don't want you to take it from me take it from our clients that have worked with us in the past and feel free to reach out to me you have my email address on here or you can just go on onpointrg.com schedule a call with me or download one of the guides that's always one of the easiest way so that's all I got for you today thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next one